Well, this is Whoopi. She's our peregrine falcon, and she would be the largest of the falcons that we would find here in our state. Uh, she's not a species that we see very often um, here, more, more or less just migrating through. Uh, we have had a few nesting pairs, one uh, not too long ago, down in the southern part of our state, and I believe that they did hatch uh, some youngsters out of that. But uh, Whoopi is here representing the peregrine falcon across the United States. And uh, she's uh, a very large peregrine, you know, maybe not very large, but at least on the large side. And while she's moving her wings, I'd just like you to take a look again at the shape of a falcon, the pointed wings and the long tail. She's a larger version of the bird you just saw, and her ability to dive is much faster, too, than our uh, little kestrel. This is a bird that can reach speeds between 100 and 200 miles an hour in a dive. And what they're going to do then is they're going to be um, looking at prey, and they've already picked their prey out. And their prey is going to be usually in flight. And as they dive down in a stoop to catch their prey, uh, they're going to use their large feet. They're either going to hit the bird with a bald foot, or they're going to use the talons uh, to knock the bird. And th they have a little notched beak, too, that helps them finish the process of killing their prey if they don't uh, kill the bird in action. If it's a small bird, it is often killed. Um, and then if it's a larger bird, they may have stunned it and they will uh, follow it to the ground. If you're wondering what she's eating, today she's eating quail. <coughs> and while we could give her um, a meat mix that's uh, you know, like ground hamburger only made for birds of prey, it's not going to be something she's going to like as well as real food. And this we know she's getting a complete diet. And you can hear her crunching the bones. She's going to get the calcium out of the bones. She's going to get, you know, feathering to uh, help again clean out her panel and then uh, the meat that she would need to go through there and nourish her body. So she's got a little bit of everything right there. Are you going to eat that on your own, huh? I didn't bring too much food out with me today because she had left some uh, in the enclosure. Well, the peregrine falcon is a species that was listed as endangered for, oh, about 25 years or so. And um, they were delisted a few years ago. And that was when um, initially what happened is we were spraying uh, DDT on our crops and other pesticides, and uh, that was to you know kill the insects. But we had a food chain reaction. As uh, we had small birds eating the insects, the inse insects eating the poison, we had birds like this that were eating those small birds. And so with uh, the uh, poison working its way up in the system, um, it was causing these birds uh, to not be able to process calcium normally. And so their, uh, their eggs were soft-shelled and they were being crushed upon incubation. And then um, there was just an effort here in the United States to uh, get these birds uh, protected and to try to um, make sure that they did not become extirpated in, in our um, country. They um, started taking the eggs out of the, the wild nests and started raising um, babies uh, in captivity or incubating captivity, putting good eggs out and releasing these birds in areas where they could be observed, like skyscrapers downtown and what better food source than the park pigeons, <laughs> which they love pigeon, by the way. <laughs> So uh, finally the bird did make a comeback and um, we, it's a good thing that we did do some banning on the pesticides because what we were finding out is it was affecting humans as well and it was starting to affect the milk of human mothers. So the birds were a barometer of what was going on out there and it's, it's a good thing to always follow what's happening uh, with our animals in the wild, especially with our birds of prey because many of them migrate and they're in the rivers, they're in the, the food sources out in the wild. So um, they, can, they can be good indicators of what's happening out there. A whoopee is blind in the left eye, and uh, she's with us because of that. A falconer raised her, so she was a good bird for us to be able to work and bring out and uh, talk to our visitors. We do take her sometimes on outreach programs. She also developed a cataract in the right eye, and that was removed by a veterinarian and also a, uh, well, actually two veterinarians, one that's an eye surgeon, an ophthalmologist, and another that is um, uh, good with um, the anesthesia because the anesthesia is different than it would be for just our standard mammals. So she went through that fine. She's starting to develop another little cataract in her eye, so we're keeping close watches on that. She's an older bird now, but she's you know, quite the favorite of us here at the yard. So we want to give you just as long a life as we possibly can. And she, yes, you've been a, a good representation of a peregrine, and I know you love to compete in a lot of food. She dropped something on the ground there. She did, yes, and she indicated she didn't want that too much. Oh. We'll try again. <laughs> <she wants. laughs>
But again, looking at her, you're seeing a solid hood around the face and, you know, cutting the glare of the sun because these birds are more active and they get so high in the sky when they dive down. Um, we do have another species here called the prairie falcon. And the prairie falcon uh, looks very much like this bird, except it's a brown color. It feeds on rodents as well as, um, as birds. And, uh, yes. <laughs> Make We're up gonna find Vicky. She, she doesn't like the bone in here, so she wants me to take the meat off. <laughs> <laughs> you want just the meaty piece, huh? Can you take it gently? Mm -hmm. Yeah, there you go.